I call Richard Prosser. Thank you, Mr Chair. I'm pleased to rise on behalf of New Zealand First and on behalf of my colleague, Fletcher Tabado, to take a call um, in this committee of the whole House as we uh, debate the Appropriations 216-217 Estimates Bill. Mr Chairman, this isn't intended to sound glib, but I really do think that um, this bill would be better entitled the Appropriations 216-17 Wild Guest Bill, um, because that seems to be very much more appropriate. <coughs> um, Mr Chairman, Bill English is no fool. He's been doing this a long time. He's delivered, what, eight budgets? And, and he should really know what he's doing by now. And, and uh, we, we would like to think that, that um, uh, you'd want to hope that he, that he did. But, Mr Chairman, there comes a, there comes a time, there comes a point um, in most administrations where hubris begins to set in, um, where incumbent governments develop a sense of, of complacency and arrogance um, when it comes to matters pertaining to the public purse. And I believe that we're beginning to see this now uh, with this national government, uh, Mr Chairman, and, and with um, Mr English's eighth budget. Um, his estimates bill. So, uh, so this budget really is more like a, like a set of wild guesses than a, than a set of estimates. There's too much about these appropriations that's vague um, and that's contradictory and that appears to have been crafted without, without proper consultation, without proper forethought, without proper planning. Time is limited, Mr Chairman. I want to touch on, on a few things um, that this budget contains, a few things that, that uh, concern billions of dollars of taxpayers' money, things that are obscured with smoke and mirrors. And the time was that this might have been an opportunity for ridicule, Mr Chairman, um, and, a, and a chance to score points. But I think we've gone past that. Uh, Mr Chairman, I actually believe that uh, the nation has had enough, um, and not just the New Zealand nation, peoples around the world have had enough, um, with, with, with governments abrogating uh, responsibilities, with governments hiding behind the, uh, the facade of we're in charge, there's nothing you can do about it, just trust us, we know what we're doing, we're not going to give you the details because, well, you know, you don't need to know, just we'll tell you what you need to know. And the first of these, um, Mr. Mr Chair, is, is uh, under vote revenue. It's a billion dollars for a new computer system for the Inland Revenue Department. A billion dollars. How, how on earth does a, does a country the size of New Zealand have a requirement for a billion dollars worth of computer hardware and software for the sole purpose of collecting the taxes that pay for the computer system? Um, and, and that's on the cheap, apparently, because they've discovered a, 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 they've discovered a, a company in Oregon that does something off the shelf that, that will do the job better than anything that they could have had designed and built on a, on a bespoke basis. And, um, you could be forgiven for thinking that where billions of dollars of taxpayers' money is concerned, um, Mr Chair, the first thing you'd do is check whether there was uh, something out there already that would do the job off the shelf, um, which means that you didn't have to go reinventing the wheel, uh, but apparently not. But that's not really the point, Mr Chair. The point is, that, uh, the point is not even that they've, uh, what they've bought or even the fact that they're going offshore. When we, have a, we have a perfectly capable um, IT and software industry in this country where we have... Uh, a large number of very bright, very well qualified, very innovative uh, professionals, designers, technicians, young people who are passionate about, about IT, about software, uh, who could quite easily have been called on by this government to create something specific for New Zealand, and indeed something which then could have been on sold to the rest of the world. It's not really, it's not really even about that. Um, the point with regards to, to the appropriation for that is that uh, the reference to the cost of the system is, is buried um, so deep and under, and under so much detail that it's, it's almost impossible to discover within the body of, of the budget documents, um, as the Chair, as to where it's going. The best I can find is, is this reference buried in the departmental other expenses. Um, and it says, expenditure in the years before 2015-16 included the feasibility, mobilisation and high-level design phase of the transformation programme and some other stuff. In addition, 2015-16 and the subsequent years include an allocation for the implementation of the transformation programme's four stages as well as to cover ongoing costs. The allocation is funded through new Crown revenue as well as through fiscally neutral transfers from within the existing departmental output expense appropriations. Um, to the uninitiated, that probably sounds, uh, indeed, um, uh, even to some of the initiated, uh, Mr Chair, that probably sounds like waffledy gook. Um, uh, but I presume it refers to some sort of acknowledgement um, of the need to put some money aside to actually pay for the thing. Um, but it's an uncertain call, Mr Chair. Under vote finance itself, uh, there are several other anomalous and, and fairly poorly explained expenses detailed. And one of these uh, is the increase in non-departmental output expenses for the management of anchor projects by Otakaro Limited, and I have to confess, um, Mr Chair, I had not heard of that company until uh, just the other day. Um, and this jumps by almost $16 million, from about $7 million to uh, $23 million thereabouts. In the absence of any explanation, you can only assume that, um, that this is concerning the takeover of the Christchurch Convention Centre um, anchor project um, by Otakaro, uh, given that the uh, private partners uh, appear to have pulled out of that process. Um, we don't know why they've pulled out, Mr Chair. We can only presume that... Uh, that the deal wasn't sweet enough for them in the end. Um, 
you know, they, they would have been expecting to make a return on the investment, and this is a... Had that been the case, uh, Mr Chair? Richard Prosser. Thank you, Mr Chair. Had that been the case, um, then, then uh, we could perhaps have accepted that, that, that some cost on the, on, the, on the Crown's part, coupled with investment from the private sector, would have returned um, something that was, that was a good deal for both sides, that the, the private sector naturally wants to make a return on its investment and deserves to, uh, and that the Crown would get something back, um, perhaps in an intangible manner, but perhaps in a tangible manner. Um, but they've pulled out, and, and we've not been told why. Not even Naitahu wants a bar of it now, um, Mr Chair. And, and that's quite telling because Naitahu, as everyone knows, are quite superb capitalists. Um, they can make money out of almost, almost nothing at all, and they do. They're a shining example, not just to Marydom, but to the whole of New Zealand, um, to the private and public sectors alike. Um, and uh, if they don't want a part of it, then uh, if they can't make a dollar out of it, Mr Chair, it probably can't be done. But we're doing it anyway. The Crown is going in and building this convention centre as part of the Christchurch rebuild on the basis, you can only presume, of build it and they will come. And I guess they will. I, I guess the, the private hotel chains and, and mall developers and so forth will come in. Uh, when the convention centre is built at public cost, then, then the companies who know that they can make money out of certain parts of that project will come in. The hotels will be built, the malls will be built, the shops will be built, and they'll make money. And they'll make money for their private investors. And the convention centre will lose it. Um, so, I mean, yet again, Mr Chair, we are, we are privatising the profits and socialising the losses. And to get back to what I was saying at, at the very beginning, Mr Chair, I think it's probably pertinent to, to point out to the government at this point that there's too much of this going on now. There are, there's, there's the wind of change blowing around the world. We've seen it in Canada with Mr Trudeau's government. We've seen it with Brexit. We've seen it in Australia. This sort of thing, and perhaps the government could take this as a warning, this sort of thing probably will happen here in New Zealand. The public have had enough of the arrogance, of the hubris, of the establishment, and it's matters like this, like this appropriations bill, debate, this, this budget which contains a great deal in the way of, of numbers, a lot about money, very little about detail, and too much in the way of subterfuge and things being hidden and details not being given, and too much that's put out on the basis of need to know, you don't need to know, we'll tell you what you need to know. Mr Chair, it's a terrible appropriations bill, we oppose it, and, and frankly, what's coming to the government as a result of this, they deserve to have. Thank you. Mr Chair. The Honourable Billy